Terry Metcalf. In the 1970s, football Cardinal owner Bill Bidwell took great joy in fooling his team, the fans, and especially the media with his hiring of head coaches. His record wasn't all that good. Remember Bob Holloway? After Bidwell fired Holloway, he stunned most everyone on January 18, 1973, when he named a relative unknown from San Diego State as his new coach. His name was Don Coriel. Under Coriel's riverboat gambling style, the Big Red was must-see TV for a few years. There were a lot of elements of that team that won more games over a three-year period than any team in the NFL. But one key player was Terry Metcalf. Terry left pulled groins and hamstrings all over the field from opposing defenses who tried to stop this guy. He returned kicks, he caught passes, and of course he ran around and threw opponents as an incredibly elusive running back. He played five seasons here with the Big Red, one for Washington, and three seasons in the Canadian Football League. In his six NFL seasons, he had 3,500 rushing yards, about 2,500 receiving yards, 936 punt return yards, and over 3,000 kick return yards. He hit pay dirt 36 times in the end zone. He was an all-purpose weapon. In the 14-game 1975 season, he set a then NFL record for combined yards with 2,462. That feat has since been broken in a 16-game era. Terry did it in 14 games. Terry was the first player in NFL history to average at least 30 yards on kick returns and 10 yards on punt returns in the same season. He also holds a record for the most games with over 250 all-purpose yards. Talk about must-see TV. The guy from Long Beach State was that. He brought the crowd at Old Bush Stadium to its feet when he had the football. We're delighted to have him return to St. Louis and honored to induct Terry Metcalf into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. So first, how is it being back and, of course, seeing some of your old teammates? Must seem like yesterday sometimes, but realizing it's over 40 years ago. Yeah, well, my body says it's 40. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's really an honor to be here and to see some of my teammates. Um, this is kind of the icing on the cake to my career here in St. Louis. Um, it was, I was telling someone earlier, after Frank, that I really never wanted to leave. But uh, it was circumstances out of my control. But so I had to go. But anyway, because I thought we had something really special here. You know, all the things that I accomplished, it wasn't by myself. A lot of those guys sitting at that table right there had a big hand in, in what I did. And the confidence that they showed me uh, just allowed me to be who I am. You know, uh, there's Mel and there's Eddie and there's Eric and there's Johnny Rowling. Even though I didn't get to play with Johnny Long, but he taught me how to be a student of the game. Mark Arneson was on the other side. Tim Kearney left. And then Jim Hannafin was a, a coach that that Coriel hired that was a teacher. They taught us a game of football and what it meant, the philosophy of a play, where to be at all times. And that was special to me because I, I thought at any time that we could win. As long as we had an opportunity, as long as there was time on the clock and we had the ball, we could win. There were a lot of great seasons, but that 75 year that in, in the tape we talked about set the record for all purpose yards. That, that season is still ninth best of all time. And in addition to that, you rushed for 816 yards. But another guy sitting over there, your fullback, Jim Otis, ran for over a thousand. Yeah, I was a little mad at Jim because he got the ball <laughs> more than I did that year, but that was okay. <laughs> because you know, the, the main thing we were winning and, and that, that's, that, was, that was our purpose. We tried to win. Um, he was the Sherman tank and I was the water bug. And it was a combination that was hard to beat. And then we had a little guy on the outside. You know, he was about five foot eight and a half on some big cleats. <laughs> but he was probably the toughest receiver that I knew of. Uh, he would block, he would catch, he would run, he would do the things that, that helped not only myself, but Jim. And then you had Jackie over there that, you know, uh, I saw him run through five people against the Dallas Cowboys. And, that took a lot of guts. That took a lot of uh, determination and willpower. And we had those kind of people on our team. And that's what made us special. You mentioned Jim Hannafin. That offensive line, there was the one season 
set a record for the fewest sacks in a season with only eight. Yeah, and I, and I have to give them a little more credit. It actually probably was seven because I missed one of those, and that's how Jim got sacked. And you know what? So, Dan, so, Dan so actually it was seven from the linemen and one for the offensive backfield. And, and Dan Deardorff tells the story whenever you ask him that one of them came on a missed, on a bad snap on a field goal, and Jim Bakken picked it up and tried to throw, was going to throw, and he got sacked. So that was one of the sacks. So, right. so but, you know, so then they really, they only had six. Yeah, so. there we go. <laughs> So you had Jim Hannafin. You mentioned Don Coriel. Joe Gibbs was a running, your running backs coach. Not a bad coaching staff. Gibbs is in the Hall of Fame. Don Coriel, a, a nominee again with Jim Hannafin for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What was it that was so different, special, whatever words you want to use, about Don Coriel's offense? Well, he had uh, position coaches that uh, believed what his philosophy was, and they not only believed it, but they taught it. And they taught it to us, so when we were on the field, it was like a extension of a coaching staff on the field because we kind of coached ourselves. We knew what to do. We knew how to make adjustments. We knew where everybody was supposed to be, when they were supposed to be there, and we just did what they wanted to do, put points on the board. And you did it, you did it an awful lot. The genes were pretty good, too, with people might not remember Eric Metcalf, his son. And here, here's a number for you, which is pretty crazy. Counting the CFL and the NFL for Terry and Eric, they had over 30,000 combined yards, running, receiving, punt returns, and kickoff returns. Over 30,000. Uh, yeah, and that's, you know, you kind of blew my mind right there. I, ne <laughs> I never even thought of it like that. Um, but yeah, we're, Metcalf's were kind of special. <laughs> <laughs> Only by the grace of God, though. But you know what? Um, we had some gifts and abilities, but like I said, it wasn't something that we just did on our own. It takes 11 people on that field at one time believing in one common goal, and that's to get to the end zone. And that's what we did. When we, when we came out of that huddle, we knew what we were going to do. We knew how we were going to do it, and we just put our minds to it. I do have to ask you, and I'm sure I'll ask Bob also in a moment, your thoughts on the state of the game today, the difference, obviously, we have all this talk about health and safety, and you don't even know how to tackle quarterbacks anymore. What, what, what's your, thought as you, your thoughts as you watch the well, game I today? Appreciate, I appreciate the safety um, beyond measure. But if I fall on the quarterback, I shouldn't get a penalty. Uh, back in my day, they were, they were throwing clotheslines. Kenny Houston from the Washington Redskins wanted to be in particular. So... You had to be tough, but you have to be aware. Uh, you're not out there trying to hurt anybody. That's not, that's not the purpose of the game. But it is a violent sport, and sometimes it does happen. And sometimes it happens when nobody hits you. Uh, Ken Willard came, from, came to us from San Francisco. When, but we were back in San Francisco. Nobody touched him, but the carpet got his knee. So there's things will happen. But I think they're, uh, they're taking a little bit away from the game of football. Because when I grew up, I had to play against my brothers and his friends who were five years older than me, and they didn't care that I was a little guy, you know. Either you play or you quit. So I learned way back then how to avoid people and at all costs. And, you know, because you see me, I jumped over people. I'd rather hit the turf than hit 260 pounds coming full steam. I mean, it didn't make sense to me. That's like running into a brick wall. I just, I couldn't do that one. So, but I think it's, it's, it's a little overkill. I, we got to watch for safety. And then we got to, and I think the biggest thing, I've been a coach for the 25 years in high school myself, we got to start teaching it at the lower level. See, they're trying to do all this at one time, and these guys have not been trained that way. So you're asking them to do something that's unnatural to them. So when I'm getting in a tight situation, my mind's going to go do what I used to do, and that's knock his head off. So, but here's the other thing I don't like. You can't touch the quarterback, but you can kill the running back. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> that, that about says it all. <laughs> Before we move on, you mentioned coaching for all these years. You're teaching kindergarten, too. What, what is every day like doing that? Kindergartners. Well, you know, I have a, you know, everybody says Barry White and Lou Rawls' voice. So, you know, a deep voice, you know, you can sit down. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but, you know, the, the things that I learned in football that 
allowed me to be successful. The structure, the discipline, uh, knowing what to do and when to do it is the same things that I uh, use in the classroom because I want them to not need me anymore, if you understand what I mean. When I can get a, a five-year-old to not ask me that I need help, then I've done my job. And what I'm trying to do is get them prepared for the next grade level. So it's fun. I mean, yeah, they come up with the craziest questions. Uh, some questions you, uh, you don't even want to think about answering. But when they bring it up, you have to deal with it. Because we're in an era now where kids are exposed to so many different things and too many things at such a young age. So you got to kind of decipher it and you got to kind of guide them and you got to kind of direct them. And um, I'm also associate pastor, so I have to put in the word of God in there so that they understand what's right and what's wrong. And then they have to make a decision after that. And last thing we should mention Monday, we should all have to say happy birthday to Terry Metcalf. Monday was his birthday. Oh, that's Monday. Yeah. yeah. I'm 67 years young, so thank you very much. 67 years young. Great memories, Terry Metcalf and the Football Cardinals. Thank you so much. <laughs>